Hi, I'm Greg Butler. In this segment of Lessons on Lifting, we're going to talk about manual trolley setup. Today we're going to be using the PTS 2010 trolley. Um, the same procedure applies similarly to the GT trolleys as well as the MR trolleys. When you first take your trolley out of the box, we need to identify a few things. Number one, do we get all the parts that we're supposed to have? And number two, we have to identify which side plate is which. So we have two separate side plates. One is gonna be side plate SN, which it talks about on page 32 of the PT Trolley Owner's Manual. Uh, SN is pretty easy to remember. It's the side plate that has the serial number on it. We also have side plate S if it's a push trolley, or this would be called side plate G if it's a geared trolley. It's the side that has the geared wheels on it. You should have a suspender, and you should have your suspension shaft with all the spacers. So one of the questions that we, we receive in product support is that people are concerned they don't have enough spacers for their trolley suspension shaft. We can reference table 3-1 in the PTGT owner's manual to, to determine if we have enough spacers and the correct amount. We know for a one ton push trolley with standard 2.28 to five inch flange range, we should have nine thin spacers and six thick spacers on our trolley suspension shaft. After we've identified we have the correct number of spacers, setup is very simple. We're gonna pull the split pin out of the retaining shaft. We take all of our spacers off. We're always, always going to start with one thin spacer on the side of the pin that goes against side plate S or G, which is the side without the serial number. Okay, so we'll take our suspension shaft, put it in, make sure that the flat on the retaining pin is flat against the spacer. Then we can refer to table 3-2 to find out how many spacers we put on in what configuration. For today, we're gonna to be talking about installing this trolley on a three and a quarter inch flange width. So on table 3-2 for a one ton trolley, we come down the three and a quarter inch flange width column, and it's gonna tell us how many thin spacers go on. Inner is in between the side plates. Outer is on the outside of the side plates. Same thing for how many thick spacers go between the side plates and how many thick spacers go on the outside of the side plates. The plus sign in the middle is our suspender. So for this trolley at three and a quarter inches, we're gonna have two thin on the left side of the suspender or on the side plate S side of the suspender. So we'll take our two thin, we have the suspender, and we have three thin on the right side. That leaves us three thin spacers for on the outside. For the thick spacers, we have one and one. One on the left, one on the right, and we have four thick spacers go on the outside of side plate SN. Now that we have our spacers laid out, it's very simple. Order really doesn't matter that much. Put our spacers on in the correct orientation. Slide side plate SN onto the suspension shaft. Put the balance of our spacers on the outside of the trolley side plates. Stick our retaining pin through and stick the split pin in. At this point, when we pull the trolley apart, we're set up for a three and a quarter inch flange width. Before we install it finally on the beam, we would wanna make sure that we bend the legs of our split pin at least 70 degrees apart so that it can't come out. There are some flange widths that are not included in the tables in the owner's manual. If you have one of those flanges for trolleys up to five ton, the important part is that the trolley can't open up too much to come off of the beam. So you simply are gonna measure, keep the trolley pulled apart, you're gonna measure from the flanges on the wheels, that dimension should be about an eighth of an inch greater than your flange width, up to five ton, and from eight to 20 ton, the distance between your wheel flanges should be approximately a quarter of an inch greater than your beam flange width. So you may have to move spacers from the inside to the outside or vice versa to fit flange widths that are not included in the owner's manual for the size beam that you have. 
That concludes our segment on manual trolley adjustment. Thank you for supporting Harrington and thank you for watching.